And there we have to be very careful that we are not influenced by negative entities because that's what they want. There are no secrets. God has no secrets towards his children. And he shares openly how, what we can understand from our three-dimensional realm versus a seven-dimensional, which is pretty more complicated. But then again, if you see who is behind it, it's always money, because the enormous amount of money, which we now have to pay through taxes. Unhappy people buy a lot of stuff, don't they? <laughs> We sit in the sewage of our own negative thoughts. Hans, how are you, sir? Hi, Chris. I'm fine. Great. Uh, yeah. And you? Yes, I'm wonderful. You're looking very well. Thank you. It's summertime and I do always do well when it's warm here. Yeah. Do you think that's a thing? I I, I try to stay you know, happy and positive in the winter. And I'm sure you've been in the UK. It gets pretty miserable here. <laughs> but um I think that's one of the challenges in life is to enjoy the summer, but keep keep your mental health dur during the winter. Right, right. Yes, when it's dark and gloomy, yes, and cold, yes. But some people love it, and that's, it's for everybody is different. Some people love to ski, which I don't. So there you are. <laughs> some some people prefer winter. <laughs> How many books have you have you written now? Uh, Two hundred and twenty plus, <laughs> and also many YouTube videos. Yeah, I've got 130 videos uh, and YouTube videos, which I um, started 10 years ago, roughly, and in which I explain visually how the spiritual world works, uh, spiritual laws work according to my understanding and studies. And what I usually do there very simply, I, I, I draw this out and then I show how everything connects. Like here, for instance, this person is doing something bad to the other one. It's karma that gets get uploaded into the, into the planets and comes back to us. Now, when you see all this, these things visually, it makes so much more sense instead of just reading about it. And I do these videos largely for myself, because whenever I study these books and these uh, revelations that were given to us from the absolute reality, from the seventh dimension, um, I like to understand it fully, so I draw it out and I share basically my own understanding visually of how I see it and how I understand it. And anybody who likes it, great, and that even doesn't like it, it's also great. I have zero interest to uh, missionarize or convert anybody or convince anybody about these truths. These truths work for me, and I respect that everybody else has a different kind of uh evolution and development and understanding and if it doesn't work for somebody that's right that's fine as well so that's what i do i share this it has to, uh, i don't sell anything it's totally self-finance and has no commercials on it either um it's just something which i uh, a service of love which i have developed over the last 10 years and also um that it keeps me focused now if i work on a video which takes a few days to create it's something where my mind is really focused on something very important for me in my life. I don't waste or squander energy by doing so. So again, I'm I'm the first the one who benefits from these videos. It's interesting you say that, um, and I'm I'm talking to our friends at home here. Is you know this is a podcast. We have lots of different guests. I. I'm trying to take the podcast um, hands in a direction where people don't have to agree with everything, but I want to put the information out there because if you don't study everything, then you don't have a base from which to then, you know, find your own happiness in life and find your own, your, your, your own way, friends. Um, your videos speak for themselves. Huh? I mean, you, you you get you get up to half a million views 
Well, my <clears throat> answer to this would be, it's not my stuff which I'm sharing. It's not what I have been sitting th and thinking out. What I share are, is re are revelations which are given to us for the last 40 years through a woman in Germany. Her name is Gabriele, and she, you won't find her on the internet. She doesn't want any personality cult. But her books are everywhere, and, and there are the, all these blue back, back books in the background of my where I'm working, and these books of all different topics are um, available in in uh, in all different languages, and there is no organization to join. There is no teacher. There is uh, no membership. It is only the material as it was given to us from the seventh dimension, which are the uh, angelic beings we can call them, uh, even Christ and God speaking through her and giving this inf incredible information. And why it resonated so much to me was because for the, well, let's say 30 years before, I have studied many, many, many different spiritual paths. Uh, I mean, Edgar Cayce most prominently, and then Cause and Miracles, and, and many, many, many other things. And they all had their value. But then suddenly I stumbled on this one, more or less accidentally. And I said, wow. Everything what I believe in comes together here. And the beauty is it comes together in a very clear, understandable language. When you read books like Rudolf Steiner, uh, uh, Edgar Cayce, you have to read each sentence three times before you understand what it means, even in German, Edgar <laughs> Steiner. Um, but here not. It's very clearly because uh, Gabriele always says, God is ingenious simplicity. And when you watch my videos, I think the utter simplicity of how everything fits together and works together is the stunning and most convincing element. There are no secrets. God has no secrets towards his children. And he shares openly how, what we can understand from our three-dimensional realm versus a seven-dimensional, which is pretty more complicated, but it is all brought into our level of understanding. So, that I found so absolutely compelling that I haven't found any contradiction, nothing I wouldn't agree, uh, disagree with or something. So for me, it works, and it works for many other people who have seen it as well. And my only interest here is, plus uh, learning from it myself, is to, to just, as you say, put the videos out, and you take from it what you like or if you don't like it. It's absolutely right. As again, there's no nothing to join, no membership. Yes, you mentioned love. I'm always saying, if it's not based on love, it's probably not that good for us. <laughs> I <laughs> take, um, you know, the world is in conflict at the moment. And it's if you, for those people that watch the mainstream media, um, I think many of us really, we don't do that anymore. But I, I was just saying to my friend this morning, you know, if you walked into a pub, a bar, and you just went out and punched someone and you smashed them down and, and, and everyone would pull you off and go, Chris, Chris, calm down. You, What are you doing? What right. are you doing? Now you've got to, you know, apologize this per you know, this. They're now damaged. They've got a family. They've got a job. The police now have to get. And yet. When the media tell you, right, let's just go invade that country and bomb it flat, we think, not not we, but, you know, the the royal we, uh, oh, yeah, that's okay. And there's no there's no love in that situation, Hans. Am I, do I, am I making any sense? Absolutely, yeah, of course it makes no sense that adult males mostly <laughs> should uh, kill each other for some re some belief system. And But then again, if you see who is behind it, it's always money, because the enormous amount of money, which we now have to pay through taxes for these military weapons, are just, people are just making so much money on the war, and that's why the war will go on and on and on, because more and more weapons are produced. That's one of the reasons, of course, but it is a major reason why now the wars, uh, every war, if you, you are an expert on war more than anybody, uh, are taking much longer than. They were usually over after a few years, but now they go on for years and years and years, because it's such a wonderful money-making business for a small group of people. 
And nobody is interested in peace, really, because it would just kill the benefit of the money. Just imagine we would have uh, peace in, in Ukraine tomorrow. Suddenly, all Grumman and all the big companies here in America, well, what do we do next? We have to get rid of our bombs. And so on. It's a very simple thing. It is destructive energy, and the destructive energy is our enemy. It is our it is not only in the in the political scene; it's also in our private life. Whenever there is something going on destructively, this is these are the energies which which make our life very very difficult, and we have to stay away from it as much as we can. As you said earlier, you are very selective in what television you watch, and so on. And I, as well as a spiritual person, you are one has to be very uh, what's the word very uh, careful to see. Um, what we watch, what we consume, and what we t spend our time with. And if it's destructive and negative and not life-enriching and love-enriching, I would always stay away from it. I do not watch any more these violent movies and things like this because they just are not not really giving me the, the inner uh, joy. I mean, they can give me a rush, and I sometimes like a nice blow-up movie as well, and so on, to where things are get blown up, uh, to have that kind of rush for a while. But it's a different thing when you see it occasionally than continuously wanting this emotional rush by watching one disaster after another disaster and listening to it. To relate back to what you said about the dimensions, and I'm thinking about our, all, all, our wonderful audience out there, is it fair to say that these are... are architects of war and the profit and the money are they living in this uh, i call it the matrix but are they living in this lower vibrational state i am not i know the the, the concept of matrix and so on i don't use the word matrix i just believe that when <laughs> we have to go back you see what I do with my videos, I always look at the big picture of everything. Mm -hmm. I step away from the tapestry of life as far as I can, take a bird eye view and say, how does this all connect? I try not to get confused by seeing the picture too close because then just see dots and here dot, the black dot, the white, but I have to remove myself away from it so I see the whole picture and then it all makes sense to me every time. So if we go back right from creation, when... Uh, divinity, God, created this magnificent universe, the absolute reality. Some of these angelic beings at the time uh, wanted to create their own reality, and they left this spiritual, beautiful realm of, 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 uh, of bliss and joy. And we call this in the biblical writing the fall. These were are the energy, a Lucifer energy, which are destructive. They wanted to destroy the kingdom of God. And these destructive forces are still among us today. They are interested in destroying everything. Because out of the destruction, they then want to rebuild their new kind of own kingdom. So these energy of destructions are everywhere. And they are not necessarily also with all the people, or whether in military or in government or whatever. These are also astral beings, negative astral beings, who have actually... Mm, Possessing, are possessing some of these leaders and influential people uh, by doing these very negative dis uh, decisions which uh, lead to destruction and suffering and pain. Because suffering and pain are emotional energies on which these astral beings feed on. We call them louche energy. So wherever we look at a war uh, theater, horrible word to use the word theater for war, but they use this as a new expression, I guess, in military terms. And um, whenever we see areas of war on destruction, we are seeing enormous amount of fear and uh, pain and suffering, emotion oozing out there. And this is food for all the astral beings. And they really make sure that they are continuously having supply of these negative forces. And we individually can also ooze it out. If we are in an extreme fearful state, a uh, painful state, we are also oozing out loose energy. And if this is, we can be attractive, juicy morsel for these astral beings. So we have to be careful too. Um, what we uh, do with our life and that we don't uh, think too deep in our emotional level. I understand that you had your share and when you grew up in right hitting rock bottom as well this is a very difficult time and there we have to be very careful that we are not influenced by negative entities because that's what they want they want mm. us to keep us low so when you speak about a matrix i i see more the whole picture of us seeing 
there are areas on this planet at the moment which are at war in a horrific way, but these are energies of loose energies. And if you look on my video, why do we kill? I think I explained it in greater detail. Yes, I think I'm with you, Hans. <laughs> <laughs> I my, my thing is, I love the scriptures. I've got some books here, but let me just grab one. This this is really been a wonderful read it's the dictionary of the sacred languages of all scriptures and myths g a gaskill gaskill okay gaskill. No, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so i mean to give you a silly example um when samson fights the lion mm -hmm. if you go in a church they'll tell you there's a guy called samson he's got long hair and he he loves to fight animals and it it doesn't really help you but with the when you understand the allegory, it it it's it's a metaphor for uh, we have to get on top of our ego mm -hmm. self and not let it get out of control. When I say sort of three D matrix, I I think there's clearly uh, whether it just be profitable corporate means people keeping the pub the general public in their angry ego i'm just going to chuck some words out here greedy addicted um hateful self i do wonder whether that's just a, that they understand they can make a lot of money because unhappy people buy a lot of stuff don't they <laughs> I'll get a new car. That will make me happy. I'll get in the new house. I'll get the new job. Then I'll be, and of course, completely missing that the higher dimensions where you don't, that stuff's nice, but you don't need it to make that connection with the universe, um, which ultimately brings you paradise. I'm, I'm kind of curious as a, just as a researcher, like are there people that sit around the table and plan this stuff? Cause they get, they get it all. <laughs> um, they get, if they can suck your, um, you know, if they can allow these, um, astral beings into your life and you mentioned it, you know, I went through addiction and, uh, what better way to give out all your good energy. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and in and in you know i invited these beings into my life so much i i went completely mentally um are the human beings on the planet like they get all this and that's why they do it that's why they try to keep humanity in in this kind of um mental prison or do we just do it to ourselves for example because we insist on watching the mainstream media you wouldn't know not to when when you're born into this what what I call the matrix, you know, this lower dimensional state, which is created from our education. Hans and Mar you know, they're never going to see above like this this ceiling that's been created. Well, I've got two answers here. First of all, do these are there people who sit around in the boardroom and decide? The answer is a clear yes because we just had the example here. Uh, um, you probably heard in England <coughs> that. <clears throat> there was a major court case here at Fox uh, Television uh, because they gave some uh, false information, um, and uh, this uh, and this they did it knowingly. It was wrong, but they did it because they had all the viewers, and the viewers wanted something to be angry about. And they know we give the viewers this anger because we have got more viewers, we have make more money. It always comes to greed, as we said earlier with a weapon it's always based on greed so i'm not saying that they are out sitting there it says oh we want to destroy the world no but we want to see how we get very rich and even mm -hmm. if we lie and send something on our powerful media which we know is wrong but if we, as long as we have got viewers we get the money so there's a typical example now i don't know what sometimes in life individually we need to really fall down onto our face and really sort of hit bottom, which I, you have done as well, to turn around. Mm. And I think that is a very natural and a, a way of awakening. And I am talking about the scriptures again. My favorite stories of all the stories uh, which Jesus told is a, one of a prodigal son. 
the very wealthy son asks his father to give his inheritance, leaves his, and the father lets him go. He says, I want to make my own life in the world, and the father lets him go. He goes down, he spends all his money, which is energy, it's all about energy, and he falls rock bottom, and he finally sleeps with the swines as a swine shepherd, herd, uh, and he remembers that the servants in his father's wealthy home are living better than and he does. So he decides remorsefully, he said, I will go back, I will ask my father for forgiveness and ask him if I could work as a servant in his uh, realm. And of course, he returns. And then, of course, the father sees him, welcomes him, embraces him, and of course, has a feast and celebrates. But this is, I think, the most powerful story in the whole Bible, because it also tells us where we come from as spirit beings. We have all been in the absolute reality, in the perfection. We all have know about bliss, remember abundance, and we have some, of, and we have fallen out of it through the fall of angels. And this memory is still in us, but our we have used up all our energy, and now we are here on planet Earth, the lowest form of, of, uh, of vibration. And in this realm of the world, we are fighting for energy to each other. I fight for energy for approval, For uh, I manipulate people, I do things, and when we invade countries for gold, or, uh, slaves, and minerals. We do everything here. The whole commerce business is basically trying to get energy from each other. Money is, of course, one of the manifestation of this energy. So we are here fighting for energy individually and collectively, and that is very, very difficult. But once we have fallen down, rock bottom like you have in your life, and you suddenly, mm -hmm. wow, there is another dimension when you saw this through the blind, the light, and then suddenly that was a wake-up call. And many of us need that wake-up call. I had it in a similar, much uh, softer way when I was young, but I think a lot of people have that, and that's the moment when you turn around. You can say to people, look, this is all a mirage, it's all an illusion, and it's etc., and you must live to, uh, according to the Ten Commandments. And it doesn't work really with people. They hear it. We all know the Ten Commandments. We all know the golden rules, but it hasn't worked anywhere. However, once you hit rock bottom, it says, Wow, now it's a moment to wake up. And so many people have changed. Like you have suddenly mm -hmm. uh, used a lot of your time for service of helping others through your videos, which is part of the healing process of the 12-step program. And that suddenly is, I think, the key element which many people unfortunately have to go through to wake up. It's the hard, hard way. You can either learn through insight or through pain. There are no other ways. Insight, if you read, study this stuff, it says, or oh, maybe I should learn a change lift by the golden rule, or through pain. And when we are rock bottom, we have the pain. And that pain is very often the element, the catalyst to bring us back to the light. You make a couple of great, interesting points. For me, I, I chatted with my podcast manager this morning, and, and we have very long chats because for our friends watching at home, being a content provider isn't just probably as simple as I think a lot of people think. We used to do a lot of military videos, Hans, you know, because I'm ex-military. It was an incredible experience, but I'm old enough now. I can see it all for what it was, you know. I I, I, I get it. I, I understand the military-industrial complex. I understand the, the mindset of very often damaged young men or women that, that that they've got no other option in life or they certainly don't want to go and work in a factory when they get offered this this military experience and you can be skydiving and you know shooting guns and you know i i try to live the spiritual battle now and we're we're moving away from that we're not we're, it, we're not saying that we're not going to have interesting guests that might have been in the military may have a military story but you yeah, really take it seriously i don't like to criticize other people and i certainly don't highlight individuals but you look at some channels out there and you know the sole focus of their content for this week is destroying this individual who's in the media because he might have done something wrong <laughs> as if as if we haven't all done lots of stuff wrong in our life well no you've done really well hands you you do the beautiful stuff and you get the subscribers 
we kind of started off i just did my channel what i can do you know i'm i'm ex marine ah i can talk to this marine very easily i just pick up the phone yep i'm coming on the show is this how you define yourself as a military guy not as a human being who went to hell and turned around it depends on how you identify yourself i define myself if anything as the universe experiences itself, itself subjectively in this body and i think that's how i always felt even though i didn't know this terminology when i was in the military i just want to make the point for friends watching that that this isn't just like a show where we're going to put any old crap to you to get your endorphins going and get you addicted to hate or fear or dirt da, 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 da. you know we we want something more beautiful here friends you know yes you're exactly right i tell this story a lot about when i really hit a really tough time in my life very tough and then i had to ask myself the question chris who made it this tough oh that was me wasn't it <laughs> so who can fix it that's me right i get it and i had this beautiful feeling of connection hands with i don't even know it was the light was shining through my window and in that moment i knew there's something bigger here once that light shone through the window i knew my life would never be the same again do we just work on ourselves and 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 getting ourselves to be the best we can be spiritually conditioned in tune eating the right you know eating a healthy diet i think everybody has a different path in life and uh, i would not easily assume that your friends who seem to have an easy life had an easy life G guys lie like hell when it comes about their inner emotional problems and i get enough emails to know that um so a person who may have the lucky go uh, face uh, may also have severe suffering we all have some form of pain this is part of our life in my understanding is that life here on earth is nothing but a school it's very short it's only 30000 days it's very very short 800000 hours and we come here and our uh, our main duty is to undo our karma which have we created in previous life i'm sorry i disagree with you here you always mention we only have one life my understanding is we have had many many lives and each time we have done some unloving things and this unloving thing has to be balanced out we call this karma and it comes back to us so our life consists of a rewinding of our past lives where all the karma which we have uploaded in the past come back to us in small little chunks every day maybe there is a, somebody cuts off of in traffic that we get a nasty email we get laid off from work these are nothing they are not coincidences these are all lessons which we have to learn and face and we all have a very very individual lesson plan some have it very very difficult some have it very very easy uh, or more easy but i think all are struggling through life to make it from finish to end and the end is for me nothing but graduation it's basically we leave this difficult life behind and return to the spiritual realm hopefully in a more enlightened way and form than before and uh, maybe we hopefully will not need to come back here but life on earth is not all there is for me it is merely a, a, a school for our soul to grow and therefore i think uh, we all have a very individual lesson and you are right we are here to clean up our own mess uh, by doing so the first and wanting to help other people the first best way is always by example without preaching teaching by being a perfect father not a perfect a good father for instance that is one way of, of being an example a good way and because kids do what they see what we do not what we tell them to do so uh, and, and the environment is the same way if and uh, over time when initially we are young we want to maybe want wealth fame power we are attracted to all these wild things in life and then comes the second half of life and suddenly we realize that these are not very important and then we look at people who really we feel dear to who have maybe touched us in our life uh, when we were young maybe a grandparent maybe a teacher maybe a neighbor maybe an uncle these people were not these powerful uh, elon musk type of people no they had one thing all in common they had humility and kindness 
And when we get older, that becomes more and more important. And we haven't got many days left maybe to use it, but that is now to, for us to develop our love muscle or kindness muscle and compassionate muscle. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the beauty of the second half of our life when we all have to let go of whatever we have accumulated before, including our last, our physical body. We learn to let go and set up a mess more and become more greedy. And in that process, let us become more kinder, more loving because as i always say the only uh, love is the only way forward there is just no other option love whatever we do whatever we say whatever we think whatever we feel love is the only way forward you make me feel a bit guilty now because um <laughs> it was on my attention no i've i've hands from my heart i i have i've you know i i i learn so much all i i learn more in one week every week now Mm -hmm. than I learned in years in the past. Mm -hmm. I used to say one life, smash it. Right. But that's just because I want people out there to live their dream. I don't want people to think I won't run a marathon because that's really hard. I may say, no, it's not. I've run marathons drunk. I just always wanted people to have for me to give them the confidence look you've got this you can do this ignore what don't take advice from other people they're always going to talk you down from stuff because they probably love you they don't want you to get hurt or they you know when i ran the length of the country hands right i had the country's top some of the country's top ultra runners tell me i was crazy and do you know what it went in the ear and literally came straight back out again. And I said to my my, my girlfriend, <laughs> friend, nah, I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to do. I have changed now. now. Now my motto is eternal life. Smash it. Because <laughs> <laughs> my, understa my understanding's changed, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Well, and, uh, of course, this is what I uh, was alluding to, that when we get a little older, we see our priorities change. And that is the benefit and the blessing of getting older, that you suddenly see things a little bit differently. When you have usually brought up the kids and whatever, all your home is done, suddenly now comes the time to reflect. And this is all worth. So nothing was wrong in the past. It was just um, that's where you were. And now you enter a new stage. We all continuously change. And you also realize that all these uh, important cravings or desires, whatever they may be, whether a marathon or maybe a boat or maybe a yacht or whatever it is, um, is maybe very nice to achieve. But there is a danger here, which I have in one of my videos there, that if we have a very, very strong desire for whatever it is, uh, to experience something or to have anything like power, wealth and fame, that can haunt us it, it can uh, and we throw this out into the future like mm -hmm. an anchor and that anchor can in extreme cases pull us back into another incarnation because it is an unfulfilled wish and wishes are energy our thoughts are energies so whatever we wish we crave for our our longings and so on our passions and um, we may want to take a look at it if they are really helpful for the development of our soul or are they merely there to fill a lack in ourselves that hole in ourselves and if we feel that this may be just a lack in our feeling our lack then let's find out how we can fill this hole what is greater than divinity and that's where the answer then is so instead of running around the world although i'm sure surely at great time maybe sitting down reflecting it says what is behind my extreme desire to do this now? What am I trying to prove? What am I trying to fill up within myself? And why do I feel not complete if I don't do this? What is lacking here in me? And the answer may be very individual. Everybody may get a different answer there. Uh, Pascal gave this wonderful quote. It says, the problems, all problems of mankind um, are stemming from the fact that a man is unable to sit still in a room alone. 
And that we have to learn. Meditation, mm. of course, is one way of doing that. We are running away from ourselves, not from ourselves, from our ego, from our busy monkey mind, which gives us thousand ideas, wishes, longings, desires, and passions. And we cannot sit still. But a spiritual being learns calmness, stillness, because a spirit evolved being knows, I probably assume it because I'm not there yet, uh, that he has got the whole kingdom within ourselves. And when we have got the whole kingdom, God in ourselves, <laughs> what is out there, what we couldn't, what we don't have already in us? <laughs> Nothing. And you sum it up so beautifully. There's so much going on here that I, I don't don't I don't feel adept enough to cover it. But the funny thing was when I ran the length of the country, I I I did it because I wanted a, a nice little holiday on my own. And I wanted to find some beautiful place to camp every night, maybe catch a fish. And that change, when, once you start putting stuff on social media and you suddenly get thousands of followers, what kicks in? It's the ego, isn't it? You know, it, it, it became something completely different. Um, and... And yes, absolutely. To anybody out there, I'd always I would encourage anyone to make that that beautiful connection that you make through the silence. Yeah. Um, please don't mistake my words when I say get out and run. I'm not. You don't prove yourself to nobody except yourself and God. I call mm -hmm. it universe, but people call it God. Yeah, I just I hate the feeling, Hans, as if someone sat there maybe in a in a one room bed set staring at the floor, thinking they're a loser and that they can't do this or they can't. And I'm here just to say, no, you can do it all. It's it's not it's not as difficult as you as you think. I think do we need experiences to get to this point of silence? Life brought you to the point that you eventually turned around. And I think life brings us to the point every moment of the day, whenever we fear have what I call these energy blocks coming back to us as karma, this unfortunate situation, which can be blow of fate, which can be an illness, it can be anything, loss of money and wealth, whatever. And these are all moments where of, uh, uh, which could allow us to reflect what is it all about. So life gives us continuously a situation where we just uh, where we should or could reevaluate our priorities and so life helps us life is always on our side everything happens for us not to us it's a difficult concept to really grasp that but whatever we are encounter is here for us to grow mm. and uh, so we have an opportunity throughout 24 hours every day to 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 wake up to understand what it is and you mentioned the young uh, a, a person, and I fully fully feel for the uh, for the people because of the our loneliness, uh, which is probably the biggest problem we have at the moment in our society, partially due to the uh, intent to the uh, iPhones and things like that. Um, sitting alone in their room and not having any more the human connections we had, as we said earlier, thirty or forty years ago, that is so difficult. To get out of that rut is very difficult because the temptations of the continuous bombardment of interesting videos and so on, uh, where you can everything have home delivered, is so strong. And to make this little effort, so I uh, n n think you do a great, th a great job there to maybe help the person. Who says, give it a try. Let's get out and do something. Wonderful. I like that. Um, so that may be just a step sometimes to step out of your environment. And I just made my most recent video is on that subject of making to leave that room physically and maybe go for a walk because the room is not, we are not alone in our little room. The room is filled with old thought patterns, thought complexes, with thought of emotions whenever we were upset and sad and all these emotions are vibrations, and they are in that room, and they continuously rebombard us all the time. So we may have wake up happy and so on, but if we uh, in the morning, but then we sit in the same room in the same chair for another five hours, and all these old emotions are just attacking us again, and we are right down there where we were yesterday evening. So I suggest in my latest video to just go out and walk. 20 minutes. I do it every day. This is not a meditation more. It's just a physical exercise where you get outside of the room and maybe open the window whilst you are gone 
put a fan up there to, to chase out all these thought complexes, these vagabond thoughts, and maybe clean up your room in some way. People are not aware of it, that, but we sit in the sewage of our own negative thoughts. All mm. our thoughts we are having are old thoughts. We have 50 to 70,000 thoughts every day, but 99.9% .9 are repetitive thoughts. In this family, we walk around the block every morning. Well, sure. okay, I lied a bit. We don't do it every morning, but when we don't, we know we should. <laughs> <laughs> It's a simple thing. And the spiritual world has told us in many books and says, do that and swing your arms whilst you're walking so that your whole body gets different energies and take some deep breath and so on. And don't do it with your phone in your hand, walking like this, you know. A lot of people, most people <laughs> do that in the city. So, yeah, look around and, and, and see and, and breathe in. Listen to the music of the city and the birds and whatever it is. It's this very simple thing, but you're right. Sometimes we just have to get our lazy bum out of a chair and move out and just see differently because it whilst we're doing the walking it is also a lot of in my video i show a lot of famous writers are doing it continuously because it is a creative power which influences us we come back with different thoughts with different concepts with different ideas and that's where the power lies in that we suddenly come we have totally different new ideas and plans which we can get just by little walks and i'm so appreciative you spent so much time with us i won't um, take up too much more of your time. I will ping you a few of these questions, not 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 all of them. And I promise I'm not going to interrupt. No, I'm really interested in the you inappropriate know. one. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, can we die? A lot no. of people, you know, it's it's a very traumatic thing for a lot of people. Uh, I just very. I, I said I wouldn't interrupt. I got to tell this beautiful anecdote. Right, I was laying some concrete with my my, my little boy, and he's a li he's. He, he was about six. Um, and as we were laying his concrete, he's doing his bit. I'm doing my bit. This leaf, leaf just blew, blew past. And without me saying anything, he just looked at me and said, Daddy, there goes granddad. That was so special, you know, and I hope I'm bringing up him up in the right way, you know, that we cannot die. For, but, but sorry, I've interrupted. Hans, can we die? Most certainly not, in my my uh, belief, understanding, and also from from various other sources, I, I can see I definitely not. As I said earlier, this life here on Earth is a school, and we finish it with graduation because we are energy, we are consciousness, and energy and consciousness can never be destroyed. We continue in the other world as spirit, as souls, as spirit beings, and will maybe have to come back many times depending on our karma. Death is impossible. And when we really understand it, then in the, the old Christian originally were celebrating a death because the people were relieved from this school. It's like college days, you know, it's very tough. And then finally you have got graduation days, Lord, let's celebrate. So some uh, spirit, um, uh, groups uh, who have a deeper understanding of spirituality are using this time as for celebration because the soul is free of all the, all the temptations and all the suffering of the planet Earth. Beautiful. Uh, next one, can we travel through space? Can we travel through space? You mean in a spaceship? I'm not quite sure how you mean. Or yeah, in the like, I, 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 basically, we've had a lot of guests on to uh, recently talking about the moon landings. My particular take is when you become spiritually enlightened, you'll see life. You won't need to ask these questions. At the very minimum, you'll just say, hey, do you know what? I don't have to decide like you know it's life is fine not to always say this is me i did i just that that's what i found i just wondered if you had a um a, you know any insight into it with respect to understanding our spiritual self hands but like i said this is probably the question that if if you don't want to answer it you just say no, next I, this is very simple. of course we can uh, physically travel by, by by rockets or whatever it's sure it's but it's very limited because we are not the earth is not meant for us to uh, as long as we are here on this 800,000 hours uh, stay here we are not meant to be on other planets really because this is not our home this is only a temporary visit like going to the movies for two hours and coming back home this is all the time we have here that's why life on earth is so short but i know people are doing and they want to go out want to go explore other planets 
Uh, fine, with, uh, that is a big industry, but we can also do astral traveling, which I do not advise to do because a lot of people are interested in astral traveling, which means you're going in basically in kind of meditation and you can uh, use your soul and go to other places. Uh, that is very dangerous in my understanding because the astral beings, negative entities, can jump in and take over your body. And you can also have uh, come into very nasty areas. So I would not recommend astral traveling. Um, I wouldn't be too much concerned about what's out there. I do make. I did make a video about uh, aliens, and uh, uh, they, they are there or not there. It really doesn't matter at the moment for us here. We are just. Our time is just far too short to worry about other planets um, individually. But um, so basically, it's yeah. That's it. Hans, um, this is a personal thing now. When you say astral travel, does that include experimenting? with psychedelics um, or, or mind, some, mind, mind altering stuff no, no no you don't have to do that you can these are just some techniques some people learn and teach to do uh, to learn it when you go to bed and so on to you can we can consciously remove your soul out of your body i again say it again and again i do not do that because you are not nobody knows what you're dealing with it is just too big the the astral entities out there do not play with that fire so i really want to have a video on astral traveling uh where i show the dangers very clearly so but I, people can do that and have done it and have come back some of them were lucky some were not lucky um so there is a way of leaving this planet but this is not our purpose here to do astral traveling that is just something which people do actually to make themselves very often interesting it's actually look what i can do i can astral travel uh, let me tell you about what i saw it can be a tremendous ego trip and like all ego trips they come with a price yes sorry the the reason i mentioned the um the psychedelic oh, yep thank you <laughs> i knew there was a reason i got you on my show hands but there we go folks <laughs> um no is i think it's the same thing is yes the the, the you, you 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 can have an out there experience da, 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 but i i remember what i watched my friend die yeah. and and it was like hands were saying the these bad beings just got straight in there because he he wasn't right in his life I wasn't like probably particularly much better. I had quite a bad time, but I didn't go as far as my mate. Um, mm -hmm. He ended up drowning in the in 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 a nearby lake, and I just remember watching him lose it. Hands, you know, just mm -hmm. just 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 like you say, these these the, the 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 negativity just gets in there, and and mm. um let's go let's take one last question um well let's take two last questions i'll tell you what they are right now and this is a very b uh, basic question folks because we're all at different places on our on our you know in our experience but i'll put number three is there a god and which religion is best and i've got number eight what is luciferian doctrine <laughs> how many hours do we have uh, it is i have no doubt i can only speak for myself i strongly believe there's a god i had my own experiences with that divinity and i cannot share my experiences because that would be totally useless you we all have to make our own kind of connection to divinity in our whatever form we have you did it with your experience I did it with uh, in in my way and but i believe there is god not only i believe it i know it is uh, because of my experiences uh, god is an energy it's love it is a seven uh, energy power it, we can call it consciousness we can call it uh, all intelligence we can call it holy spirit we can call it uh, uh, the field we can give it many many names of potentiality but that is all what it's god is it's an energy um, but uh, it is also a very personal energy as well. So we can really, as little children, as in the wonderful experience, uh, story I said earlier, the prodigal son, see him as, not visualize him as an old man, but the energy of a father image or mother image, whatever this is. Uh, we can approach that energy in that kind of child father, child parent kind of relationship. We can come absolutely humble 
uh, to uh, him and ask for help because we and uh, help is always given to us always not always in the way we want it but it's always there because the whole universe is supporting us here in our school years on earth uh, we have got our guardian spirit we have got uh, the whole uh, all the other energies uh, the divine energies and everybody is here to help us to pull through so yes, there is a God. Yes, we can ask Him for help. Yes, it's very, it is a very lonely existence if you do not know about uh, God. But that is something we have to explore and uh, go within ourselves. God is not out, out there. God is in us. The kingdom of God is in you, Christ said very clearly, because everything else is only a mirror around us. It's another long talk. And the Luciferian topic is just simply too long to really say something, but it is a kind of a belief system that Lucifer was here to heal, uh, help everybody. And um, it is one of my most popular videos. Um, Chris, it's too long to speak hey, about. Hey, that's a but I invite anybody who likes to know more, but go to my video um, or go to my website, lifeexplained.com, and look at the video. It is a very complex situation, but basically says there are these negative forces and many people have uh, given alliance to these negative forces and often not being aware of it, often believing that they are actually working for divinity, for God, but on the, un on the contrary, they're working for destruction. And that is part of the problems we are having in this world. Hans, on that point, can I just thank you so much for such a wonderful, um, enlightening and beautiful conversation i thank uh, you for inviting me that was a great uh, because as i said as i speak to you all these things are coming up for myself i'm listening to myself and that is uh, my benefit and partially my reason why i shared on podcasts like yours yes and my point also why i love i love these chats friends because um i get to ask the interesting questions that I'm interested in. And I hope that you will be, you will be too. And stay on the lights, stay on, on, on the zoom, just so I can thank you when I push the record button off, but um, massive, massive. Thank you again. We'll put the link for your, for um, your, your website and any other links that you want below the video. So people can find you um, to our friends at home. As always, much, much love to you. I hope this is a little brick in the wall of your own experience. And uh, if you can like and subscribe, hit the bell. That always helps too. Much love.